Chung Wen Lai is no stranger to a little risk. As a former trader, he was used to making big bets on businesses. I used to work in Barclays uh, as a trader. It's a very good life, maybe too good. So when he stumbled upon an idea to build a business of his own, he was all in, even if that meant switching the stock exchange floor for a mattress on his office floor. That is being desperate because you just didn't have enough time to go home. And getting a little imaginative with the truth. And obviously if I went to a client and I said, I have one van and half the time it's out of commission, she would probably tell me to get lost. So I said, no, we have multiple vans, don't worry about it. Chung Wen is the co-founder and CEO of Ninjavan, the multi-million dollar express delivery business that's become a driving force behind Southeast Asia's booming e-commerce industry. The 32-year-old started the company here in Singapore with two friends back in 2014, and is now the trusted business partner of some of the region's biggest retailers. But his original vision would have seen him become their competitor. Slightly more than five years ago, I was running kind of an e-commerce company, small e-commerce company, selling online primarily in Singapore. And every time we had an online customer, we went, wow, that's really easy to get a customer in no shop, nothing required. But the pain only hit after that when you know, we had to deliver the parcel. So many issues came up. I think the entire logistics industry was just not set up for e-commerce at that point in time. So foolishly, I said, why don't we open a logistics company to solve this problem? And it should be easy. In a year, we should be done and let's find something else to do. <laughs> so that's how it started. Weeks later, Chung Wen and his two co-founders, Bo Sian Tan and Sean Chong, were up and running, leaving behind stable jobs in finance and engineering to expand their men's fashion business, Marcella, and take on deliveries. In the first year, we were running both, and we thought, you know, this is highly synergistic. You have a business on one hand, generating volume for another business. But the more we did it, the more we realized that fashion business wasn't necessarily our forte. Right. And if we were to be a very neutral, agnostic provider of logistics services, ideally, you should be neutral. Right. So we decided that let's focus on a business which we felt could scale a lot better and not just in Singapore but across the region. So the entrepreneurs pivoted again, shuttering their fashion line and investing their savings to go all in on their delivery service, which unlike traditional delivery providers, leverages heavily on technology. It was a promising gamble. E-commerce in Southeast Asia is expected to grow to $150 billion by 2025 thanks to rising internet penetration and an expanding middle class. But when it came to delivering orders, the region was lagging behind. According to the World Bank's Logistics Performance Index, the majority of Southeast Asian nations, with the exception of Singapore, have a long way to go to meet the infrastructure capabilities of the most advanced economies. I would say I knew more about the micro aspects about it than the macro trend when I started it. I have a problem, I have a business, I'm an e-commerce seller. I know the pain points, yeah. I know how to solve it. The three friends soon found out they were not the only ones eager for a new and improved logistics system across Southeast Asia, however. Indeed, just months after launching in Singapore in 2014, Ninjavan expanded to Malaysia and Indonesia. By 2016, it was live in Vietnam, the Philippines and Thailand. Today, the company claims to have 100% coverage in its six existing markets and plans to go live in Brunei later this year. I think it's in Luzon in the Philippines. Okay. We, we have pictures of parcels being delivered by an ox cart as well. Wow, wow. So, so you're really in the most rural part. So you're 100% covered. Yeah, 100%. Chung Wen says that has everything to do with Ninjavan's technology, which has enabled the business to scale quickly and empower its drivers, known as ninjas, to efficiently sort and deliver orders, even in the most remote locations. The less people have to think, the more scalable a business gets, the more consistent a business gets. In 2014, Ninjavan was the first logistics company in Singapore to provide real-time tracking updates. It later harnessed algorithms to optimize route deliveries and save on fuel. The company has also been able to use its data to hire more drivers during peak shopping periods, such as Singles Day and Black Friday. Whether it's in the sorting process, I mean, you can see the sorting centers, it is all quite automated. Uh, there are portions of the process, which is people, but in those processes, you see that the devices they are using helps them to decide. Okay. And those lead to very consistent outcomes. It hasn't been all good news for the young founders though. Ninjavan has faced criticism on social media for shortcomings in its customer service, which Chung Wen acknowledged. Our business is never perfect and you never will be. As long as it is a scale business, as long as there's a people element, they will never be perfect. So what we have learned is that if you're at 99% perfection, do you push for 99.5? Or do you push really hard to make sure that the 1% of errors are handled in a perfect manner. So that's where we are focusing on a lot. That determination is something that's caught the eyes of investors, including Facebook co-founder Eduardo Saverin, who helped fund the company's international expansion. 
Koi Yi Lim from Monk's Hill Ventures was another one of Ninja Van's early supporters. I sat down with him to learn why. I first met Chang Wen and the team when they were pitching me Marcella, and we weren't so compelled by it. But in the conversation talking to Chang Wen, he uh, shared with us uh, the challenges that he had. And through the conversation, he had ideas about how to make it better. Were there particular characteristics that really stood out that made them look like go-getters? I think so. I think it's the right balance between being thoughtful mm -hmm. and at the same time being biased towards action. Right, you can be thinking too much and doing too little, right. or doing too much but not really thinking about it. Mm. Chung Wen is hoping that will stand him in good stead as competition heats up. Ninja Van is one of a host of logistics vans, including La La Move, Go Go Van, and Logi Van, to launch over Asia in the past few years, and they show no signs of abating. In fact, Southeast Asia's third party logistics market is expected to grow at an annual rate of more than 5% over the next five years, to be worth 55.7 billion by 2025. But the Singaporean co-founder says he's confident he can set his business apart. He says he's doing that by directly employing his fleet of 20,000 drivers, who, unlike the freelancers used by competitors, have a vested interest in ensuring the business is built to last. It is not as though one day we have a million parcels and the next we have 10. There's a base load requirement. And a base load requirement is best served by people who know that they are being taken care of, by people who are experienced in their job, by people who are tech enabled. And that's our approach. In 2019, Southeast Asian ride-hailing giant Grab invested in Ninjavan and integrated its delivery services within the Grab app, unlocking a new customer base for the company. Grab isn't the only company getting behind the young founders. In 2018, the business received a record-breaking $87 million Series C funding round from investors including European delivery giant DPD. Ninjavan now claims to have raised over $300 million, which could put it on course to become one of the region's next billion-dollar unicorn. Logistics now is a very hot investment mm. theme. If you think about what has been done already, it's just scratching the surface. Mm. Uh, a lot of people are going to come online in terms of buying stuff, purchasing more stuff. And there's just one demand driver for logistics. Koi Yi says other drivers include healthcare and industrial goods. That's going to drive from the demand for more sophisticated, more efficient logistics. And, and open up the, the space for new players mm. and incumbents alike to address. But now that Chung Wen is finding himself on the receiving end of these big bets, he says he's more determined than ever to make sure his vision succeeds. That includes carving out a sustainable path to profitability. We are profitable in some countries, in some we are close. And which countries would they be? I think this is all we will share for now. We are not growing at all costs, we are growing in a responsible manner. We do not believe that growth of a monopolistic market is the end goal. To me it's very clear, focus on the people, focus on our customers and build services around them. Do all that, you will get profitable.